Hey guys, Dan here, welcome to unit three. And in this unit, we're gonna actually do some practical recording. So for you guys that are really interested in setting up a home studio and wanna to get to the point where you can get your guitar into the computer, fire up a DAW, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, and actually get some recording started, this is the unit for you. In the following unit, we'll see how all our wonderful tutors go through this same process. I'm gonna show you my process, um, and we're gonna come at it from very much from a point of view of less technical, more actually doing. Okay, so I'm just gonna get you to a point where you're just able to do this and get something really cool out of it. So, when you're ready, come with me and we'll go through this. Okay guys, so just before we get started with this particular lesson, don't forget you can head on over to the website to get access to our full write-up. And if you do want to support us as well as get access to our community, direct access to myself and all the other mentors, as well as progress tracking, a customized pathway, and so much more, then you can sign up to our YJ Club and all the links are below. Okay, so in this first lesson, we're gonna just start by firing up a DAW, talking a little bit about what that is, and, and how it works and just get a sound coming in from your guitar, okay? So, first things first, you can see I'm on my desktop here and I'm gonna fire up something called Logic, okay? So, what you'll see here um, is Logic in the corner like that. So, Logic Pro is a DAW, a digital audio workstation. There's lots of DAWs out there. Basically, it's the program you need on your computer that goes alongside the audio interface. So if you remember when we spoke about it, the audio interface brings in the sound and that sound is gonna go into your DAW. That's where you're gonna have the facility to record it and make it sound awesome. So I'm using Logic Pro. It's very specific to a Mac. So if you've got a Mac, um, Logic Pro is a uh, kind of, I guess it's pro because it's paid. Um, you know, this is, I think, I think it's typically around 200 pounds. I'm not sure that, what that is in dollars, um, but you know, it's definitely a paid program. So it's a bit of an investment. However, you can do exactly the same thing we're gonna do now on GarageBand. GarageBand is absolutely free with a Mac and it's basically the same setup. Um, what I wanna do is I wanna show you how it works not just like in Logic, but how a DAW in general works. So no matter what DAW you're firing up, you can find your way to use it. So whether or not you're using Cubase, Cubase is an option more specifically for Windows. There's um, Pro, to Pro Tools, which is a very, very cool one. And then you've got loads of free ones as well. So just have a quick Google search for DAW and, and decide what you want to do. If you're on a Mac, I'd recommend using GarageBand or Logic. Um, and if you're on a Windows, you know, you've got Cubase, you've got um, so many. Pro Tools is a quite a high-end one. Um, there's, there's, there's absolutely tons of them out there that you can get. I'm gonna show you how they fundamentally work. So it doesn't matter that I'm using Logic and you're not, you're still gonna be able to find what you need to find in the program. So once Logic is open, so I've got Logic open here and I'm just gonna um, do a file new. So this is very standard uh, technical stuff, right? So file new. Okay, so when you fire up Logic, um, Logic will give you a kind of a pop-up to say, what do you want your first track to be? Now, depending on your DAW, it might not do that. It might just have no pop-up, okay? So for now, I'm, I'm gonna almost totally ignore this. It's, it's set to audio and all these things which we don't quite understand yet. So just ignore this for now. I'm just gonna create, create that now. Um, the first thing actually that I want to kind of show you is, is basically the only views you really need. Um, and I'm also gonna slightly simplify this for the moment. Um, so this is basically what a DAW looks like. Uh, and most of them honestly look exactly the same. Um, you might find that something like if you're using Ableton Live, it looks quite different to this from memory. Um, but you can obviously find tutorials on that online. But most DAWs look very similar to this. On the left-hand side, you'll have your tracks. Um, so these are your individual audio or MIDI tracks, and we'll go through that in a bit. Um, here is your actual timeline. So for example, if I press play now, you'll see this is following along and it, it's, it's doing it in beats. So three, four, if I actually activate this, click. 
we can see that we're just moving along a timeline. So this is your time going along, okay? So if I imagine I'm gonna record a drum beat and I pop it here, that's where you, know, you have to play through that part to hear the drum pump, okay? So I'm just gonna stop that for now. Now, just as I go through, I'm gonna give you handy kind of normal uh, things that you would expect to do on a keyboard. Um, so for example, play on pretty much every DAW on the keyboard is also the space bar. Um, so if I do the space bar, that's gonna play and stop. And normally as well, the enter button is back to the beginning. So that's certainly what it is on Logic. You can, if you're advanced user, you can program these to do whatever you want, but these are the basic ones that are normally the same on every DAW, okay? So the first thing we gotta do is we wanna make sure that we're set up so that our audio interface is coming into our DAW. So to do that, we're gonna go through to preferences. Now, most, whatever DAW you've got, I'm sure there'll be a preferences panel, and we're just gonna go to general at the moment, okay? Now, with this, there's loads of stuff here we really don't wanna get into, okay? So we just wanna try and find the audio preferences. So there's my audio preferences. Now you can see what we're looking for here is our input and our output device, okay? Everything else, for the moment, I want us to ignore. Because really, for the point of view of what we're trying to get in here, and get a guitar coming into Logic and getting a sound out, we shouldn't have to do too much fiddly stuff at all, okay? So, all I'm gonna do here is make sure that my output and input device are set correctly. So if you look here, um, there's a bunch of output devices and input devices here. We're gonna start with input device. Now, if you remember back in a previous lesson, I, I walked you through our focus, right? And, and, um, and how that works and what it is. Um, and the focus, right, if I just quickly pop and get that. Um, if you remember, this is, this is also called, I'll just put it in front of the camera here. This is also called a scarlet. Um, and down below, I've actually got the, the eight, the one eight, the 18 I eight scarlet. So it's exactly the same as this, it's just a little bit bigger, okay? Um, so I'm just gonna put that there for now. Um, so, with that in mind, that means that's what I'm looking for when I come to my input device. So, all this other stuff, you know, we don't want the, the MacBook, that's my actual computer, we don't want the microphone from that, definitely not. Although, that is an option, you know, if you don't actually have an audio interface, um, then you can just use the microphone, but generally it's not gonna be a very high quality stuff, it's, that's actually quite a, a bad way to go, I would say. Um, so tip, we're working with the idea that we have an audio interface, you've just got to find it. And we want that interface to be the input and the output, okay? Um, it's the output because if you remember in a previous lesson, we plugged in, let's get this again, we plugged in out of the back, um, to, we either have our speakers going out of this, okay? Or we have um, the, spe the headphones coming out of this, okay? Um, so e whichever one you're using, that means that we have to have the output of the audio interface like that, okay? So, we've gone, we've done that. Uh, so we've made sure now that the, the DAW is now receiving the interface and is going out through the interface and then we would click apply. Now that, that's already the settings that I've got, so I just, I don't need to click apply, but I would normally click apply, and that's it. So now, what I found, if I look over here at my audio track here, okay, you can see um, I've, I've got an audio track and I can actually activate that audio track with these buttons, okay? But let's just take a step back. I want to now, add an audio track, because it kind of prompted, if you remember, it prompted me to do it when I first fired up Logic, but not every DAW will do that, so I want to kind of do it from scratch. So I'm gonna to go to File, and I, here, I, I've got some options, okay? So um, I want to go to Track, sorry, not File, and add a new track. So in Logic, it's there. You can also just simply press this plus button here, and that will add a new track. Like I said, I'm trying to show you guys no matter what interface you have. So normally there's a way, to, you're looking for something that says add a track, new track, something like that. So I'm gonna add a new track. And then I need to choose my track type. And for now, for this lesson, we're just working with audio, okay? So you can see we've got software instrument, that's gonna be MIDI, we'll talk about that another time. We've got audio, we've got drummer, that's very specific to logic, that actually gives you kind of a digital drummer, if you like. Um, and then guitar and bass, that's actually, we don't, we're not gonna use that, that's kind of like, that's kind of shaping our sound. We wanna be in control of exactly what we want. So um, we just simply want an audio track, 
Okay. Now, at that point, we have to make sure that we choose the right input of audio track. Okay. So again, down below, uh, I've got the eight ins and eight outs. Okay. But um, what I want to show you guys here is, if I get this in focus, um, where am I focused? Here we go. So this is input one and this is input two. Okay. So if I had this audio interface plugged in, I'd have input one and input two. Okay. And I, I've got right down, down below, I've got my guitar, my jack to jack, my cable going into input one. So that's very important because now when it comes to my audio interface, when it comes to selecting it in the DAW, I need to select that input one because that's where my guitar is coming in. Okay. If my guitar was in the third input, I'd select audio th input three and so on. So we select that. Everything else, we're not going to worry about anything else, everything else. The cool thing about these programs is they're quite intuitive. They generally know what you want typically. So it's quite rare that you actually go in and have to change anything else. And that's more of an advanced tutorial. So input one, we're good to go. You can see it's got the device Scarlett 18 i8 and I can press create. And that's created me an audio track. This is the one that I created initially, which I'm just going to delete. Okay, so I've got this audio track. By the way, I deleted that by simply pressing the delete, the, 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 the back arrow delete button on the, on, the, on the keyboard. So I have an audio track and I'm, I'm a little bit OCD about this. I like it to be neat. I like it to be tidy and I like to know what I'm doing when I'm producing this. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to double click that and I'm going to name it Guitar One. <laughs> and that's going to be my guitar, my first guitar track. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is actually check that now the signal is going to be coming in. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my phone here. So I'm just going to take a bit of footage so you can see how this looks on my focus right down below. Um, but basically the first thing I want to do is I want to select R, which means that the record is enabled and I. And I means that the instrument will be coming through. Input monitoring is what's come up there. So that it basically means that I'll be able to hear out of my DAW and my speakers the input that's coming in. So I would firstly just make sure those two are selected. Okay, so let's just head on down. So um, first thing I want to establish is I'm not using the Kemper for this video. Okay, I'm not using that yet. Um, I'm going to be using that later on. Okay, that's my, remember that's my amp essentially. Um, for now, what I'm using is just the focus right. Okay, so I want to establish here that you don't have to have an amp at all. If you use the, um, if you're doing digital practicing like this, so or you're trying to record something, you don't have to have a guitar amp. This is literally, you'll see this lead here is going all the way down there, diddly, 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 into my pedal board, and my guitar is going into my pedal board. Okay, so there's no actual amp beyond what goes into logic. Okay, so I've got that in input one, as we just discussed, and I've got it set to about 12. Um, again, this is how you would now adjust the gain. So if it's, if the signal is too low, then I need to go higher and higher. If the signal is too high, I need to come lower and lower. Okay, and we're going to see that in a second, because when I now start to play in a second on there, you're going to see it come through. So let's just have a little look at this. Um, I'm going to come over to the guitar and let's see if we've got a signal. So we should have a nice clear signal. There we go. So you can see from the screen recording that I've got good green bar. Okay. You can see that it's not too, it doesn't look too low. It's filling up most of that bar and you can see it's just starting to hit orange. Can you see how it's just going from, yet, from green just about into the yellow, orangey area? What I'm going to do actually is I'm going to just slightly adjust that. I'm going to come up a tiny bit. I'm just going to take the gain up a tiny bit on the, on the focus, right? So now I really am just hitting that yellow, that orangey part. And for me, that's, that's the, the, the really sweet spot that I'm looking for. I don't, I don't want it to just be all in the green. I want a little bit of orange. Um, that means I'm at a good volume for recording, basically. If you start to go over to red, you're going to start to break up and clip and it's not going to sound very good, but this is great. So really we've ticked off a lot of cool stuff here. So if I just come back to the computer, um, we've, we've now got the guitar 
in to logic, okay? Um, we, we can hear it, I can hear it coming out of my speakers. And so I'm set up, I'm kind of ready to go to record something. So the first thing I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna record a really simple loop and I'm gonna show you something really, really cool. Now, in logic, you get a really cool little thing like this, and this is just a looping function, okay? So whatever other DAW you're in, hopefully there'll be some kind of button that looks like that, or something you can find, or even just search for it, the looper, the looping function, okay, like, like that, okay? Um, and that highlights a certain amount of bars, okay? So this is where we need to start setting up an idea of what we want to record. So in this instance, I'm gonna record myself a little backing track. This is the kind of process of what I'm gonna get at later down the line. Um, but for now, let's just set a tempo, a loop, and then just record something. So we can just do that process and learn that process. Um, so um, here, this is, this is your kind of navigation bar, right? And you can change this to be so many things in logic. Um, you can have beats and time, okay? So when I go across, it kind of goes in beats and also how many seconds it is, okay? Um, you can have just the beats, you can have beats and project, which kind of tell you the kind of tempo of the track. All of these things will be totally customizable. What I would suggest, okay, I, I typically have it on the custom setting, which gives me all of this stuff, okay? You don't necessarily need all of this stuff, but it's nice that it's there, I, I think. Um, but for the purpose of simplicity, I'm just gonna go with the one that it kind of starts with, which is just, just this, right? And I'm gonna set a tempo to my track of 100 BPM. So now when I do that click, you hear, look, I've got that click activated here. That's my tempo, two, three, four, that's 100 BPM, okay? So what I want to do is now just record something with that. So a couple of key things to bear in mind here. This little loop function, you'll see that what it means is it just cycles the specific area. Three, four, one, two, like that, okay? So whatever I record in this area, it's just gonna record over and over again, and when I come back to it, I can choose my best recording, right? This is what I love so much about Logic and all the other DAWs, okay? So I'm just gonna literally loop that particular section. You'll see here that this one, two, three, four, this is a counting. So again, when you're on your DAW, you can use counting functionality. That means when I press this record button, I can have a one bar counting if I want to. Now, for my purpose, I don't need that because what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna loop this and in, my, in good time when I get to the guitar and I pick up the guitar, I'm gonna start playing. Um, and I'll just take that loop from where it is. You'll see what I mean when I do it, okay? What I would like to do, because I'm gonna be sitting a bit further away from the screen, is just make sure I can see it properly. So using these buttons over here, I'm gonna extend the, the kind of the bars so they look bigger, and also just extend this bit so it's just visually very, very clear what I'm doing. I've got the R button set, I've got the I button set so that it's input monitoring, it's coming in, plus the R is set so that the recording is ready, and then I can either press this big obvious red record button or I can simply press R on the, on the um, actual keyboard, but I'm gonna press the R button for now, and we're recording. So you can see at the moment I'm recording absolutely nothing because my guitar's over there, I'm over here. But you get the gist of it, right? So I'm gonna go over to the guitar now. We're recording, we're recording. Here we go, right. So I'm gonna record just one little part. I'm gonna try and do it in time with that beat. Two, three, four. Okay, so that's my little part that I just recorded. I'm gonna come back over to Logic. Okay, now. You see, the way we record, now we've got kind of six takes. All those first takes were just me just chatting to you guys, okay, so there's nothing come through. That take that I actually did, it was take five, okay? So all I have to do is go to take five and just select it and just drag it across. Make sure I've got the whole thing. And there it is. So I would collapse that like this, okay? And I've got my take. Now, one thing you might wanna do then is just simply click on the A button at the top there and just flatten that. So 
rather than seeing all six of those takes and taking up processing power, it's just the one take that I really did well and I like, and I've got that, and if I press the space button, I've got my guitar recorded. I can turn the click off, and it's just dry, it's just literally the guitar going into the, the interface. Of course, it's going through some pedals, but I didn't actually have any of them on, so it's essentially dry going into there, and we've just gone through the process of recording your first audio part. Now, in the next lesson, we're gonna get into some much juicier stuff, so just have a go with that, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Okay, guys, that's it for this lesson. If you're looking for the next lesson, please do click here. If you're looking to start the whole series, then we've got the full playlist available right here. You can go from start to finish.